Chocolate orange pistachio shortbread. Chocolate orange pistachio shortbread. Chocolate orange pistachio shortbread. Hi, my name is Suli. I'm here to make you my chocolate orange pistachio shortbread. I don't know if any of you guys remember this chocolate orange where you can slam it on the surface and it breaks into segments. I remember eating that for the first time when I was a kid and just loving that flavor combination. So part of the chocolate and orange combination is nostalgia and part of it is just that it's, I think that it's delicious. I can't wait to show you my cookie, which I think is a very simple, beautiful, delicious cookie. The first step that you should do is prepare your pan for the cookie dough. And what I recommend you doing is you take plastic wrap, kind of like what you would do with parchment, but we'll use plastic wrap here. And then you turn it and you do the other side. Leave some overhang and you'll see why at the end of the recipe. This is the pan, not in which you're gonna bake the cookies, but where you're going to form the dough so that you have a perfectly square dough and then you can make nice clean cuts with it. Now we're gonna measure out the flour. I like the scoop level out method. That way you don't pack too much flour into the cup. And then you smooth it out. Okay. You can use the back of a knife or I have a ruler here too. And then we'll do that. And salt and you whisk it to incorporate it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is prepare the candied orange peel and the pistachios and chocolate. I wanted to talk about the candied orange peel. It's actually not something you can easily find in the grocery store, but it's something you can find online. You can search for glazed orange peel. Another reason I thought of this combination is because I had a lot of the stuff left over in my pantry and I was like, what can I use that I don't have to go shop for because I'm kind of lazy. I really recommend that you use bittersweet chocolate for this recipe. So the bittersweetness is a great balance with the sweetness of the candied orange peel. This is also just a coarse chop, and you don't have to be afraid if you end up chopping it finer, or if you end up using chocolate chips, that's totally fine. Whatever works for you. Well, let's talk about butter. It should be at room temperature, not cold butter. Because cold butter, you can't mix it. The temperature of the butter should be so that it's not so soft that it loses shape, but soft enough where when you push down, it does this and it holds the shape a little bit. I start low so you don't get too many splashes. I want you to scrape the sides so that it gets mixed in. I think it should be like this, so this is fluffy, and it's a little lighter in color than the original color of the butter. Now we're going to add the yolk. That's it. Just until it's mixed. Start on low so that you don't get flour everywhere. One thing I do at home is I do this. Oh, oh no, it didn't really work. But you get the, you get the idea. Ah! It looks crumbly, but don't worry. It'll all come together once you press it into the pan. Now I'm gonna remove this, take off the excess dough from your spatula. If you find that it's too hard for you to mix it with a spatula, you can also use your hand. I find that right now it's feeling like a little bit, a little bit hard to incorporate, so I'm gonna use my hand. So now you just scrape it into this. You just use your hands and you press the dough into the pan. It seems crumbly, but it's actually like pressing in nicely. And then once it hydrates for a few hours or overnight, it will be a perfect cohesive dough. I was doing this thing at home that I thought worked really well. I'll show you. Let's cover the dough with the overhang. You take the sides, cover it neatly. 
And then what I did at home was to make sure both sides were flat, I inverted it and I pushed it back in. So then you have two flat sides and you don't have to worry about it feeling like, oh, one side's a little wonky or whatever. And now we're gonna chill it for eight hours overnight. It's been eight hours, the minimum time required to chill the dough. Divide this evenly into three long pieces. I'm just gonna first score it. Some of the pieces might fall off, but don't worry. It's, it can be crumbly. All you need to do is push it back in. Don't be nervous. I'm saying that to myself. Now you're gonna slice them crosswise, about a third of an inch. You can see like a window pane through the oranges. I apply this rule to a lot of things that I do. It's called the confidence move. Like when you're cooking, you just like, you cut things, you do things, you just do it with confidence and somehow it always turns out. Boom, they're out. Hot cookies. So we wanna let these cool on the tray before you eat them. And as you can see, they're golden brown on the edges and I think that it's a fairly even bake. Mm, it's really a good cookie. It's a little warm still, so the chocolate's still a little soft. Even if it cools down a few days later, I think it ages really well too. I baked some off a couple weeks ago and I left for a work trip and I came back. They still held up very nicely and I kept eating them. I just finished the last one yesterday. I feel very proud of this recipe and I hope that all of you enjoy it too. As a thank you. Oh my These God. are all of our cookie week cookies. This is beautiful. Wow, this is a treat. Thank you. Happy cookie week. <laughs> Let's eat some cookies. <laughs>